The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Friends, we've gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Jesus of Nazareth. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss, May God grant us peace, that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Would you pray with me? Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially we praise you for Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe that where we have not seen, that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home made not with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Amen. I want to read to you a scripture from the New Testament, from the book of Revelations, as we remember Jesus of Nazareth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first earth and heaven had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the things, these things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, Now I am seeking, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things. And I will be their God, and they will be my children. Friends, we're gathered here today to pay our respects to our good friend, Jesus of Nazareth. Now, Jesus, Jesus was one of those guys that was friendly to everybody, even to, to those that most of us wouldn't give the time of day or cross the street to help. Jesus loved the children, and he even gave them special attention when he was gathered in large groups. We've seen the picture of Jesus with, with the children gathered at his feet. Jesus was kind of hard to figure out sometimes because he would put himself in places that most of us would never go. He was, he was friends with tax collectors. He was friends with politicians. He was friends with adulterers, and, and I have even heard that he was a friend of a prostitute. Jesus was a friend of all, to all kind of people. Now, early on, Jesus put together a group of 12 friends that honestly were pretty rough around the edges. 
And then he, uh, he spent three years traveling with them, traveling all over the countryside. And, and during that time, his, uh, his friends related to me that, that he told stories, that he healed a lot of people. He gave sight to the blind, and he made the lame to walk. And he even brought his friend Lazarus back to life. Now, I had a chance to talk with some of his friends after they had taken him down from the cross, which was the, the instrument of his death. They told all kinds of stories to me. They told about going fishing with him. And, and they said how much they had learned about other people and about themselves. And that, that their friend, our friend, taught them how to treat other people with kindness and with love and with forgiveness. Now, they said that Jesus was, was really kind, and I think that we've witnessed that. But he was also very strong, and boy, did he have a temper when people were treated badly or when they used God as a reason to do bad things. They say once he even tore up a marketplace that had been set up in, in one of the temples. Can you imagine that? A man so loving and kind and compassionate having a temper. They talked about the dinner that they had with him last Thursday, which turned out to be his last supper. They had a lot of conversation. They told a lot of stories. But then when the supper was over, they said that, that Jesus took bread and that, that he broke that bread for them. And he told them that, that every time they ate, that they were to remember him and do this in remembrance of him. And then they said that, that after they had had the bread and and had the, had the meal, that he took the cup. And, and he even gave thanks to God. And he told them to drink this. It was their wine from dinner. And he said, drink this because it's my blood that's given for the forgiveness of sins for you and for many. And then he went on after they had shared the cup and the bread and he said that one of his best friends was going to betray him and he looked right at Peter and he said Peter before the cock crows three times you're going to deny that you even ever knew me and then then he looked at, at Judas one of his twelve chosen and told him that he was going to betray him, that he was going to turn Jesus over to the government. And, of course, Jesus, Jesus knew all of this, but Judas, Judas tried to convince him that, no, that wasn't going to happen. But then Jesus told him to leave and to go ahead and do what he had to do. And then after the supper and, and after he had, had confronted Peter and after, he, after Judas had, had left, they went to the garden, and they said, the, his, his followers told me that they went there to pray. They went there to pray about what was, what was to come. But then, Jesus saw Judas, and Judas had showed up with soldiers. And those soldiers drew their swords, and, and Peter told me that he drew his sword to fight for Jesus. And in fact, he cut off the ear of one of the centurions. But Jesus said, put your swords away. This isn't the time to fight. This isn't the time for violence. And he even, according to Peter, picked up that, that centurion's, that soldier's ear, and he put it back where it belonged. And he healed the very people that were coming to arrest him. And then the next thing they said that they knew, they found themselves in the courtyard where Jesus was being whipped. 
they gave him 39 lashes because they said that 40 would kill a man. And then, after they finished that brutal punishment, they had a choice to make. The people had a choice to make. They could either allow Jesus to live and select a known hardened criminal, Barabbas, to take his place. But they chose Barabbas to live. And then the, the centurions made Jesus carry his own cross, the beam on which he was to be crucified. And then the soldiers killed him. They hung him on the cross. Now, his followers and all of the people there said that they hung Jesus between two criminals. But everybody was focused on our friend. Everybody was focused on Jesus. And then some of the people said that, that at the very end, he cried out to God. And then they said he died, that it was over. You know, Jesus, Jesus was a good man. Jesus, our friend, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, was a good man. And we're going to remember him from all of the wonderful things that he did and that he said in those three years that he traveled with his friends. We're going to miss him. We're going to miss him because he was, he was really part of us. But our memory of him is going to last forever. May Jesus of Nazareth rest in peace. Would you pray with me, please? Almighty God, receive Jesus of Nazareth into the arms of your mercy. Raise Jesus up with all your people. Receive us also and raise us into a new life. Help us so to love and to serve you in this world that we may enter into your joy in the world to come. Amen. You know, this is where a funeral would normally end. We would say, go in peace. But this isn't how it ends. This is not a typical funeral. This is a celebration, but we have to remember that at the end of a funeral, that's how his disciples were feeling on that Friday when Jesus was crucified, that Friday that we celebrate and honor today. We know this isn't the end of the Jesus, but it is a sad time because we've lost a friend. We've lost a friend, but it's temporary. What we sometimes overlook is that part of God died on the cross that day, part of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, was removed from the Godhead on that day. God was incomplete for that period between Friday afternoon and Sunday morning. The world was lost, but that wasn't the end of the story. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's allow ourselves time to grieve, time to hurt, and time to remember all of those things that Jesus did in his earthly existence. Now tonight is a very bleak time for Christians around the world. And for the next two days, we need to think about what this world would be like without the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And even though right now we're in a dark place in our history, here I am in this sanctuary preaching to myself. But here we are, but we know that even this is temporary. Just like the time that humanity was separated from God after the crucifixion. Just like we know that Sunday is coming and nothing can stop it. Our darkness and our hopelessness will also come to an end, and we are going to have the opportunity to experience our own resurrection as a people of God, as a people of our community, and as a people of faith. And I ask that during these, these next two days that you take time, 
that you take time to think about what this world would be without God in it. That you take time to say a prayer for your friends, to say a prayer for yourself. Take time to say a prayer for our nation and for our world because we are in a dark time. But Sunday's coming. Sunday's coming and all of this, all of this will be in the past and we have nothing but the glory of God and the gracious forgiveness of the risen Jesus Christ to look forward to. Would you pray with me? Merciful and ever-living God, creator of heaven and earth, the crucified body of your son was laid in the tomb and rested on this holy day. Grant that we may await with him the dawning of that third day and rise in newness of life through you, through the Holy Spirit, and through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. God be with you. God stay with you. And the everlasting love of Jesus Christ, the everlasting forgiveness of Jesus Christ be with you now and always.